See, I like to talk about high performance. In high performance, there's a pyramid. I'll call it the majority, many, few, and the 1%. Everybody in this room already knows it. You all, as an organization, are climbing this pyramid. You're the best. And the real question is, how do the best get better? You know, how does that happen, right? And I get the rare privilege to work with organizations and teams around the world who are already at the top of this pyramid. You know, I don't care whether it's in pharmaceutical, absolutely. You know, whether it's in other elements of healthcare, whether it's in technology, down there at Silicon Valley, Wall Street, with the best financial folks, the best teams, and yes, the Golden State Warriors. I get to work with those people. And here's what you find. The people, the teams, the organizations that are the exact at the top of this pyramid, they do things similar. What's the first thing I notice? Well, they get together. See, human beings need to connect. If you think about the power of this meeting, everybody connecting. And then what? We align. You absolutely get alignment. And then commit, commit to doing things differently and better and greater, right? That's what, that's what the best do. They just do a little bit better than others. We call it operational excellence. Okay, that's true. But here's the question. What happens in the top one-tenth of one-tenth of one percent? What happens in this next pyramid? Because if you want to go there and be at your best, I love that. If you want to do that, something else has to kick in. What kicks in is right here. It's right here in the, up there in the brain. This right here represents not the one percent. This represents one-tenth, one-tenth, one percent of all the pilots in the world. There's hundreds of thousands of pilots, tens of thousands of tackle jet pilots. Only six of us got to wear this helmet. And half of us were new every year. You know, by the way, not just the pilots, my whole support team. I had 120 individuals. A third of us were new every year. That's why I loved when everybody stood up who was new in the room. Your team is a lot like my team. And we had a challenge. And my challenge was this. Not only how do I reach a level of excellence, how do I sustain excellence? How do I sustain excellence under change, changing markets, changing conditions, changing people? And I think what you'll find is what this helmet represents is a culture. And I will suggest this. It's a culture of excellence and a culture of caring, which is exactly who you are. I know this because I can see it. I saw it in your other teammates as we were playing that video earlier. You know, I see it in your results. It's powerful, right? It's very powerful. Okay, a couple cool parts about this helmet. First off, you see this visor? Okay, it's gold. Uh, who else was alive when Neil Armstrong walked on the moon? Anybody else in this crowd? Okay, there's only a few of us left. Okay, so, so, so I'm a little kid, right? Yeah, I was a little kid. I'm, I'm at my grandmother's house, and I'm watching Neil Armstrong walk on the moon. This is actually Buzz Aldrin. But the reason you can see Neil Armstrong is seeing this visor, see the lunar lander and Neil Armstrong, because he's wearing the same visor. See, these gold visors allow you to look directly in the light and not blink, which I think is a pretty cool leadership metaphor. When the heat's on, when the pressure's on, can you look directly in that light and not blink? A couple of the cool parts about this helmet. See the back of it? There's a crest. Okay, we don't call it a logo, we call it a crest. Here's what's interesting. When you're selected for the team, you're not allowed to wear it. You're not allowed to wear it until your teammates tell you you've earned the right. We had this peer review process, pretty cool. Also, there's a nickname, okay? Now, uh, all fighter pilots get nicknames. We actually call them call signs. Let me give you the first clue. You don't get to pick it, and if you like it, it doesn't stick. <laughs> okay, so, so my call sign is Gucci. Well, no fighter pilot wants Gucci. You want Hitman, Viper, Iceman, Maverick, something cool, right? <laughs> but do this. At the time, one day, I wore this thin black leather tie. That wasn't even cool in the 80s, right? <laughs> I was also living on a sailboat and driving an Alfa Romeo, so my teammates would call you Gucci, by the way. Okay, but I think what this, this, this helmet is, it's iconic, right? We all need icons in our life, something that represents what you stand for.